the West now have a more sympathetic approach to Hamas in light of their involvement in the release of Alan Johnson? In the light of Hamas's involvement in the release of Alan Johnston, should the West now take a more sympathetic approach to them? Well, Douglas Murray, you'd better start on that. Well, um, <laughs> the answer is no. Of course not. The, I, I'd like to know who it was who was booing in the audience. I'd like to know who the Hamas supporter is in the audience here. Hamas is a terrorist organization which makes a fetish out of the murder of Jews. And I'd like to know who it was who thought that that movement was a good thing. This, incidentally, if you don't mind, Jew murder. Let me tell you what these people were doing just a couple of weeks ago to their own co-religionists in the Gaza, where they went to their next-door neighbours and threw people off buildings and shot people in the back when they were running away. And you think now this is a rehabilitated organisation because they posed for the release of a journalist? All because right. they posed and organised that to look good? Mm -hmm. Douglas Murray on freaking fire, folks. Freaking fire. Literally. Velvet glove tch, tch, to the audience. Velvet glove. Tch, 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 tch. Smack Ola. Absolutely. Challenging the audience saying, I want to know who that Hamas sympathizer was that was clapping for that thing. Absolutely. And he just basically laid it out on a line in about less than a minute there excoriating the audience beforehand, saying that, oh, they're, they're, re, they're rehabilitated. They let go of one person, and now they're rehabilitated. They're not going to do anything anymore. They're going to be friendly with us now. Amazing, folks, amazing. Let's continue. Yeah, uh, okay. I don't understand, Douglas, most of what he says. I mean, I, I appreciate the comments that you make, but, Douglas, you make them with such venom and such the bizarre language. No, 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 you know, with bizarre language that it really doesn't help. I'm sorry. And you can cozy no, up no, the Hamas, you can hug Hamas Douglas, if you Douglas, want. Douglas, you've had your fair share. Let us speak. <laughs> so you do. It doesn't help. We need to look forward for things. Oh, my God, these people are such stupid, moronic idiots. This lady, Saida, oh, my goodness, you know, she's what? 10 years old? I, mean, I know she's older than that. She's going to be a minister one day. And she says that Douglas is the one that's using language. He doesn't understand his language. Does this lady does understand with her name and her background? She's Muslim. What the hell would happen to her if Hamas? They would throw her off a building probably. They would put her in jail. They wouldn't even allow her to do that. She's able to be a, she's a shadow minister right now. One day she's going to be a minister in the government of England, in the government of Great Britain. And she doesn't understand how Douglas can be so passionate about a terrorist organization like Hamas using the language. That's the only language that these idiots, that these terrorists are going to understand. You have got to not allow these people to bully you. Um, I think that uh, we, um, I actually um, uh, welcome the fact that Hamas were actually involved in the release um, of this person. And it was the first step. Um, and, and, but we must be very clear about um, Hamas. In terms of, in terms of <laughs> moving forward, should we appreciate them? Well, I hope that any organization would help in the release of a hostage. And, and I, think that, um, I, I think that we need to be very clear about this. Um, in, in the recognition of Hamas, the principles, the quartet principles, have been very, very clear. Hamas, if it is to be a responsible government, must recognize the state of Israel. It must denounce violence. They'll never uh, do that, lady. It, They'll never do that. Agreements. So what we have to send out the message to Hamas is, this is a first step, but you know what the table rules are, and if you're prepared to come to the table, then maybe we can think about it. How do you distinguish it. between them and and the way we negotiated with the IRA? Exactly. I think without, we said without, exactly without, the same. Exactly. Without yes, doing any of these things. No, no, well, we, we did. We made it very, very clear. They have to denounce violence. They have to be prepared to put down their arms. And they have to be prepared to recognise. I mean, they were not saying that they do not recognise the existence of Britain they or did not want to that state to exist. And they didn't have to give up that claim during the negotiations. And Hamas still have Mr. Shalit. Anyway, uh, they still own Mr. Shalit. Okay, um, the answer to your question is no. Um, there should be no change in policy. But I think the question that we need to look at now is 
why haven't we been negotiating with them from the start? Now, OK, I understand all the points. They are a terrorist organisation and they are causing horrific acts of violence. No killing ship, way, Sherlock. Way no ship. People. One person is too many. Way, way too many people. Um, but no, the, the issue is we asked the Palestinians, one of the parts of negotiating with the Palestinian Authority was for them to form a democratically elected parliament. They elected Hamas. Now, I'm not saying that Hamas is necessarily a really great party, but we, uh, because we asked them to do this, are we not behind the fact that they've put Hamas in power? We've been neglecting the Palestinian Authority. We haven't given them a state, and we haven't even helped them on their way to find a solution here. And I think if we started to do that, if we started to, to help find the solution, then maybe Hamas wouldn't be in power. But yes, we should be negotiating with Hamas as a political organisation, okay. not as a terrorist group. The, the woman at the back there in spectacles. How can you call um, Hamas a terrorist organisation? Well, they, they um, uh, re reply to Israel bombing them and bombing on Lebanon. And how can you call them a terrorist organisation because they killed... So Surely this government is a terrorist organisation for all the thousands of this innocent, innocent, wait, innocent wait, wait, civilians, wait, wait, women wait, and children wait, wait, they have wait. killed in Iraq. Okay. How can you Ed, say Ed Miliband. In the illegal war. It wasn't even... All right, Ed Miliband. Look, I think... That right there, folks, that right there, that girl, that face right there, that is just I, to see this. This is the face, folks. That's the face of liberalism. That's the face of a leftist. That's the face of a person that does not love her country. Basically, she's calling Great Britain a terrorist government, a terrorist nation. That's the kind of guff that she's been fed. That's the kind of guff that she's been that she's swallowed, hook, line, and freaking sink sinker. I mean, it's this is what's happening to the kids and children in America. This is what's happening to kids and children in Australia, in other Western European countries like Great Britain. This is what is happening. This is the downfall, folks. This is what our kids are learning, either in school, through liberal and leftist and socialist and Marxist teachers, through the rewritten historical books that they're reading, through the internet, through the people that they coalesce around, leftists with leftists. And that's, that's what's happening right there, folks. That is it in a nutshell. You saw exactly the venom that she was bringing, Great Britain is a terrorist nation in illegal war, and she's comparing them to Hamas. How do you fight that, folks? How do you fight that ideology that's instilled, ingrained in these kids like this at such a young, early age? Reply to Israel bombing them and bombing on Lebanon. And how can you call them a terrorist organization because they killed? So Surely this government is a terrorist organization for all the thousands of this innocent, innocent, wait, innocent wait, civilians, wait, wait, women, wait, and children they have Go killed on. in Iraq. Okay. How can you Ed, say Ed Miliband. In the illegal war, it wasn't even. All right, Ed Miliband. Look, I think this is a very difficult issue because uh, Hamas was part of a democratically or uh, an elected government. But the thing Alleged. I would say to, to the person who asked the question is, I, I don't think we can uh, negotiate or have political uh, uh, conversations, discussions with Hamas at the moment because uh, for, t for two reasons, uh, and Saida said this, first of all, they don't recognize the state of Israel. And I think everyone agrees, every, I, I think most people agree anyway, that a two-state solution has to be the solution uh, in Israel-Palestine, and, and Hamas doesn't recognize that. And secondly, they haven't renounced violence. And, and the answer to David's question about why is this different from Ireland for Britain is that we're not a party to the conflict in the Middle East. And if we move in now and say that we are going to start negotiating or having political contacts with uh, Hamas, where will that leave Israel and where will that leave our relationship with Israel and our ability to get the kind of Middle East solution that Charlie rightly says that we need to, we need to move on? So when, when the Foreign Secretary, the new Foreign Secretary, I won't say he's your brother because it's totally irrelevant, but when he, <laughs> when he acknowledged what he called the crucial role, role played by Hamas, 
Was he going down the wrong road, do you think? And when an early day motion signed by Alex Salmon saying we should, shouldn't preclude contact well, I, I with Hamas, is that right or wrong? Do well, I, look, I don't think David was, was signalling a change in our approach to Hamas. Okay. You're so mean. You've been McCall. Ask him to talk about his brother. This is bl not, blood I, I can't not ask him because it's his brother. No, no, He's the I foreign know, secretary. He keeps minister. doing it. He keeps doing no, it. Don't, don't prodding, speak prodding. to a minister about his brother. Um, my, my opinion is, Poppy, let's get back to the question. That is, um, I think that wouldn't it be great some point in the future, whoever thought in our lifetime we'd see peace in Northern Ireland? I know we were involved in that. Um, in some way, but wouldn't it be great if at some point negotiations could happen, diplomacy could happen, and Israel and Palestine could join together and talk and try and work it out? I know this all seems mad, but I never thought there'd be peace in Northern Ireland in my time and that we wouldn't be fearing terrorist bombings in London on a daily basis from the IRA. I just never thought that would happen, and it did. So these mad things could happen. Okay, the woman there on the right, yes. To say is no wonder Hamas was smiling yesterday. Britain has made a huge concession to them. We always said we would never negotiate with terrorists. Yet the BBC mobilised a huge, who is supposed to be British Broadcasting Corporation, mobilised a huge international movement to negotiate with these people. No wonder they were smiling. From their perspective, we've made a huge concession. Before it gets even further, we need to take back our, hard, our firm stance against Hamas. Um, ask them to release Gilad Shalit. Absolutely. Get them to deal with the Israeli MIA. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. Just to, just to clarify this, you, you, you don't think the BBC should have tried to get its reporter sprung? It should have left him in prison, not with not Hamas, it has to be said, but with another group within Obviously, Gaza? Obviously, the release of Alan Johnson is a good thing, but... It ha but you have to under it has to be taken into consideration that in order to secure that release, a lot of back channels, a lot of back doors were used, and Britain stood down from its stance. A concession has been made before. In 1948, Britain couldn't cope anymore, and it left Palestine. It left it in a mess. This time, we cannot make a mistake. We have to keep a firm line to get a secure and solid two-state solution for both countries to exist in harmony. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the man on the left are there. Yes, you, sir, waving. That, that, there's a yeah. real inconsistency in the way that uh, most people treat, especially the last speaker um, and Douglas and others, uh, treat Israel and Palestine. And that is actually, we support Israel. We sell them arms, we sell them weapons. We've continued to trade with Israel through the, through the EU. And actually, um, Charlie, not only did we um, reject Hamas after they were democratically elected, but we actually cut off the budget of the Palestinian Authority. So we are not uh, a neutral party in this. We've supported Israel for years. And um, I don't think that's been recognised by people in the debate. Okay. Yeah. And, and the, the person in the front here, uh, in the very front row, in pale blue shirt. Um, why should we be negotiating with a terrorist organisation? Because if we go easy on Hamas, surely they're just going to be pushing their borders further and further, Absolutely. using more terrorist techniques until they get what they want. Okay. Okay. And, and you, not shaking your head in disagreement here. You disagree with what he said? Um, I think it has to be recognised that uh, the suffragettes were a terrorist group. Nelson Mandela was a terrorist group. Thank God we negotiated with them. Thank God we got democracy for them. OK. And, and the woman there with spectacles on, yes, and the, I can't remember which row you're in. Yes, uh, with the yeah, scarf. I think we absolutely need to be sympathetic to the Palestinian people. This is like the longest occupation in modern times. Yeah. Why would normal people decide to support like a terrorist group? Because, because they feel like occupied. they've got no other options. That, and we have supported yeah. Israel okay. for so long and for way, way too long. Don't, don't why, don't why, why too long? Occupied. Why, why too and long? And to make the equivalent between the suffragettes, the suffragettes never got onto a bus and tried to blow it up and kill as many people as possible. If they did, women might not have the vote. Okay. The, man in, the man in blue. Yeah, I'll come to you, Charlie. Did you see? <laughs> we got to go back there, folks. You just got to go back. You got to see that kid. Douglas just literally, okay, wiped that smug social justice warrior, virtue signaling smile off that young kid's face. I mean, it was absolutely precious moment to behold. Precious. Let me go, just go back in time and see if we can see that happen again. And we have supported yeah. Israel okay. for so long and for way, way too long. Doug, Douglas Murray? Gaza is not occupied. And to make the equivalent between the suffragettes, the suffragettes never got onto a bus and tried to blow it up and kill as many people as possible. If they did, women might not have the vote. There it is. There it is. Look at his eyes. 
Look at his eyes, folks. Look at his eyes. Look at his lips. He's literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> he had no idea what was coming his way when he put that thing with the suffragettes. I was going to say something before, but it was such it went by so fast that Douglas Murray literally took the words out of my mouth. Okay, and just took it right to this kid here. That is an unbelievable frame picture, folks. Unbelievable. Let's continue. Okay. The, man in, the man in blue. Yeah, I'll come to you, Charlie. Man in blue, there. Let's be clear. Hamas has a popular mandate to rule the Palestinian people. Does mm. this mean that every Palestinian is a terrorist facilitator? Should we just eliminate all of them because by calling them a terrorist organization mm -hmm. you're obviating the possibility of negotiating with them if you just call them a terrorist organization they're in charge of the country does that mean we should wipe out palestine don't say they speak for the palestinian people hamas and palestinians they have been elected, have been elected right. democratically no they haven't so, been elected yeah. it's okay. allegedly one, they do speak for the palestinian people because they were democratically elected um <laughs> secondly um, and the, the other point... Does he speak that, for you? Um, He's in government. Yes, Does he, he does, because all he the was time? majority. No, not all the time, but I support him because he is the government. Well, he isn't the government by himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He and the foreign secretary yeah. are the government. Yeah. <laughs> him and his brother rule our country, yeah. Um, no, um, and on the other point that you made um, about, um, about the uh, Gaza Strip not being, um, not being occupied, yeah. No, it, it's not occupied anymore, but it is surrounded and all exports are being controlled, and there's uh, water controls, and the airspace is being controlled, and they don't have access to the sea. I'd call that an occupation just without the soldiers being there. OK. Right. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to move on, but just, just before we move on, uh, this is the last question time in this, in this current series. Now, we're going to be back for aficionados of question time late in September in Brighton, where the Liberal Democrats are going to be having... Well, that was fiery and that was passionate. And Douglas Murray got his, um, you know, points in there along with some of the people in the crew. There's that young man over there. If you take a look, he still looks like he <laughs> doesn't know where he's at, you know, what happened to him or whatever. But anyways, um, once again, showing how passionate this question becomes and the young people out there. And you know what? Let's not just say it's just the young people, folks. It's not just the young people. We've got the elderly. We've got, you know, the people in between. They're also been fed a whole bunch of misinformation as to what's happening because it's just so easy to be swayed, to say, oh, you know what? Yeah, they, they did something nice. What would that be? That would be like Hitler letting a few people go. And then we say, oh, but forget about the other stuff that Hitler and the Nazis did. They did let, you know, 10, 15 people go. And that's exactly what the equivocation which is over here. Because they let go of one hostage. Hamas, a terrorist organization, let go of one hostage. And now all of a sudden, they're, you know just a stellar organization they should be brought to the table to be at the table with other nations on an equal footing and they everybody goes back to the back and forth they go back and forth they have no freaking clue see that they were democratically elected you can't be democratic elected if you're democratic elected by force if you're the only body there that has the guns that has the fear, that has a violence on your side. And then just explain to me that after the elections were over, why was it that their opponents mysteriously went away? Did they go on vacation to the Bermudas? Did they go to the Hamptons? Were they out in the Caribbean? No. They were six feet under because Hamas killed them, threw them off of buildings, shot them in the back, killed them in their homes, raped their women, and killed everybody. So there was, and so what are you doing now as a Palestinian? Are you going to say anything? Are you going to stand up and say that's wrong? Of course you're not. You're going to put your head down, and you're going to shut up, and you're going to do whatever you can to keep your family safe, and you're going to zip your lip and toss away the key. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. 
I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If we burn your subscription your life or con- and you like our content, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. Check out our other video content. Links are above and below. My final thought is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.